One of the things I really enjoy about living here in Western Oregon is being able to spend time in the forest. We have an abundance of wonderful wild food that is available to us. We're gonna to try to find what's growing and we're gonna do some cooking in the woods. I'm out here on a friend of mine's property and we're looking for some truffles, white truffle in particular. Most of the truffle hunting that you do in Western Oregon, you're gonna to need to get onto somebody's property who has a tree farm. So you're gonna to need to have permission to do that. These trees are roughly 15 to 20 year old trees and it's the ideal conditions for truffle hunting. If you have a dog, that's great because a truffle dog will sniff it out. There's other things you can do if you don't have a dog. First thing I would do is if I'm in a new area, um, I would look around on the ground and I'd look for where the moles have been digging. There's all these little holes around the trees. To me, that's where I would start. You just kind of dig it up and you go down about three, four inches or so. They attach themselves onto these roots of the tree uh, and then they start to grow and then the more moisture and rain you get, they remove themselves and they're pushing up. This dirt is kind of mealy, which is perfect. If I do get one, it'll kind of like actually pop out of the ground. Oh, here we go. That's a nice one. Nice, firm. It's a beauty. To me, it's like it's December. And uh, one of the ways that I know it's December is that I'm out here digging for truffles. It's another thing that reminds me of what season it is. So those things to me are really cool. Nice. So I am covering this all back up. Just gotta always make sure everything looks really nice when we're done. It's a lot of work, you know, coming out and digging and sometimes digging and digging and not finding much is kind of part of the deal. Finally hit a good spot. Another nice one, we're gonna keep that one. Boy, it's so firm. It's tight, you can't even squeeze it. It's almost like a rock. So that means it's very green. But you know, just after one day putting that in the refrigerator in a, in a jar, I like to use rice, because then I can cook the rice afterwards and have it infused. But um, this, this thing is gonna start giving off some good flavor. It's a beauty. Part of the reason why we're able to find truffles on a tree farm area is because things are much more clear and they're kept groomed. So if you go out into nature and you're looking for truffles, you won't find as many because there's more plants that are competing for the soil. There's another little one. I'm actually finding a lot of these smaller ones, but I wanna make sure that I put these smaller ones back in the ground. And literally, I tell you, if I staked it and put this in the ground, I would be able to come back in a couple of weeks and see the progression, this thing will grow. So it's really important that you don't just take everything, but you leave some behind, and especially those smaller ones. This one's really nice. This one's a little bit smaller, so I probably put that, that one back into the ground as well. Oh, look at that, some more popping. We actually end up doing better than we, uh, better than I expected. Oh, there's, there's two right there in that spot. Go ahead and hang on to those. Uh, oh my goodness, look at this one. Woo! That's a nice puppy there. This is the uh, truffle of the day so far. This is a nice honker beauty. Ow! Hot stuff. All right, so we did have some success. This is what we got here. We're gonna go head out and look for some chanterelle mushrooms and some hedgehog mushrooms and whatever else we might find. This did not have snow on it last night, so this just fell overnight. This little dusting. I always love coming out here. It's great to mellow out, just to get away from everything, you know? Just, your mind just uh, is not on anything really super important when you're out here. You're just uh, kind of chilling in the woods and getting some good clarity in the mind and forgetting about things and being blown away by nature. So now we're out in the wild in a whole different area from where we were at when we were looking for truffles earlier today. 
We're in an area where the chanterelle mushrooms and the hedgehog mushrooms thrive and many other mushrooms that need this damp, darker area to grow. We're actually finding some yellowfoot chanterelles and some hedgehog mushrooms out here. That one's pretty firm. It's small and everything, but it's a good sample. These have been damaged, you can see. They're pretty well beat up. Got a lot of moisture. If I squeeze them, they're super wet. So I'm really not going to harvest these at all. We'll let these ones go. But if you notice the ones out in the open here, they're beat up really bad. But if you push away these salal here, these ones are actually in a little better shape, the ones that are protected from the elements a little bit. I really like using a knife with a nice long blade. I can really get in there and get down low to get them at the base of the stems, you know, without removing the entire mushroom. You don't want to just pull mushrooms up out of the ground. You always want to cut them so they'll come back the next year. And if you cut them, they will come back. You never want to eat a mushroom or pick a mushroom that you don't know anything about. You should only pick a mushroom that you are 100% confident in that it is the right mushroom. If you don't know what it is, you need to learn about it first or go out with somebody who really knows what they're doing. Also, I always like to inspect them twice. So after I go out picking with several people, and when I get home or wherever we get to, the truck or whatever, we always go through them all twice because you never know if somebody's off on their own picking and they're not real experienced but they're out here with you because you showed them how to do it they might grab the wrong one on accident and it gets mixed in so you always got to double check everything because you don't want to die we got what we need and we're going to go cook them up so this is our pizza oven and we're gonna get this thing fired up to about 700 degrees and we're gonna start cooking some pizza. I have a toothbrush here that's set aside just for the truffles and we're gonna brush off as much of the dirt as we can. You don't wanna wash them, it'll destroy the truffle. This is truffle oil that I made from truffles earlier in the season. So these ones, instead of cutting them, I just tear them apart. Don't really need to do much to those and they're pretty much done. And now after sauteing the mushrooms, we're gonna place the mushrooms on the pizza shell and we're gonna put cheese on it and cook it at 700 degrees for three minutes. Then we're gonna grade the fresh truffle on the pizza and finish it with some miner's lettuce that we got earlier at a lower elevation. So this is what I love to do. I love to come out into the woods and forage and make simple dishes with the ingredients that are right here in the forest. 